Yep. So everybody who's uh, attending the webinar today, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Varun Kashev. I am uh, the director of business solutions for Web Spiders Inc. Uh, I have with me our senior executive consultant for enterprise solutions, uh, Stephen Blandon. Hi, Stephen. Hi, well, hello, Varun. So we're both coming to you live from New York City. Uh, from the Web Spiders offices in downtown Manhattan in the heart of the financial district from One Liberty Plaza. So for those who are local to New York, uh, hope you're enjoying the sunshine. Uh, it's a uh, rarity these days with the rain that's been uh, coming uh, pretty frequently, but I uh, hope it stays like this. And those who are joining us from other parts of the world, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules and being with us today. So... Today, we're going to talk about cadence marketing powered by AI for sales at events. So event sales, and this, this is for wide, I mean, event sales is a wide range of services, products, and uh, utilities that are sold at these events. So we're going to cover a couple of different use cases, and then we're going to show you an actual case study from uh, an event, uh, you know, a vendor that sells to events and is one of the largest, uh, you know, is selling to one of the largest, uh, has a, is a registration provider for uh, one of the largest consumer electronic events called CES. And I'm pretty sure you guys uh, have heard of that. Uh, those who haven't heard of that, CES is the largest consumer electronic show in the world where most of the latest and greatest uh, in the new electronic products are launched. They have about 3,000 exhibitors. So we're going to talk a little about how we're helping them you know, approach their sales to these exhibitors and how AI is helping event vendors, you know, multiply their revenue by X's, like, you know, 5X, 10X and stuff like that. So so the case study that we're going to talk about today is uh, one of our top customers. Their name is CompuSystems. They are a uh, Chicago-based registration, event registration provider. They were founded in 1976. Uh, as I said, they are the registration vendor for one of the largest electronic shows in the world. Apart from that, they are also the registration vendor for over 200 shows across the United States. And, uh, you know, they've been leveraging our technology in the past year to reach out to primarily their exhibitors at the events. Because one of the things that they also are selling at these events where their the registration vendor is the lead capture technology that they have and uh, their lead capture tools so so they're the industries that they're serving their end users the customers are across different industry types uh you know and the sizes of events are anywhere from 100 100 uh you know from a few hundred thousand people to over 200,000 people so so very very uh uh, different sizes of the events that they're serving to. But, you know, um, so one of the biggest, you know, I'm sure uh, you as a, as an attendee to this webinar, you must have attended a lot of events. I'm not sure if you have exhibited at a lot of events, but Stephen, you and I have a lot of experience at, of yes, exhibiting at a lot of events. And then one of the key elements as an exhibitor for me is to make sure that I have everything that I need when I get to my booth, for which I have paid a massive sum and I have a huge objective out of that event is to get the leads, right? Okay. Now, now my objective is to make sure that I have everything at the booth, but a lot of times, and I am myself an event organizer uh, for my own company and I, I am responsible for our exhibits and, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, it's just not easy for me to remember everything that well, I not need. Only, not only, Vroon, is it not easy, but there's a lot of times where you're like, uh, Stephen, I'll, I'll be right back. I need to speak with Freeman about something. You right. Know, so right. It's a long line, and then at, it's a lot of time that you're missing um, when there's you know quality prospects that's coming to the booth. So it's it's really at a cost to you know right booth or deal with any you know nonsense at any point that we typically deal with okay we have no av okay i'll be right back and uh yeah so continue i i feel that pain right no absolutely so so one of the things that i feel is currently missing is that the service providers at these events 
they send like one email at the beginning of the event. You know, right. the event organizer sends one event email, which is the exhibitor manual, which has, okay, go here to order this, go here to order electricity. Uh, they'll send you a link to order carpeting, furniture, et cetera, but that's it. And then it's up to you as an exhibitor to make sure that you've done it on time, yeah. that you read the exhibitor manual and that you've done it. But a lot of times people end up not buying or renting a lot of these things because they just missed the deadlines and now the prices have gone high and they're finding alternative solutions. To well, my, my situation is like, if I miss it, you know, I get so many emails for it that by the time, I don't even realize it was sent to me because it's email number 98. It's way at the bottom of the list. Right, so that's a great point. And what, what I'm trying to get to here is, so this is, this is, we're trying to come across here. What we're trying to show is that as a vendor who's selling to these people, you are losing out these customers. Exactly the point that Steven said that that email that came from whoever it was who is selling the lead capture tool 20 days ago, the event is two months down the line. And by the time I am coming across around to, you know, starting planning the event, I don't even know everything that I want. And I'm like, okay, these are the primary things that I want. And then I'll figure out when I get to the event. So I don't know if I had, you know, what deadline am I missing for an early bird cost and what's going on here. So the solution that we've offered CSI was, so so what, they, they were losing out a lot of customers because people were not ordering in time. And then they were reaching the show. And by the time they were reaching the show, the price had gone up and the early bird pricing had gone. And then they were like, okay, you know what? Forget it. We'll just manage capturing these leads using, you know, pen and paper, the old traditional way, or take pictures of their, you know, badges or, you know, uh, take their business cards. And as, as a vendor to this show, I mean, th there's a huge revenue where there's 3,000 exhibitors and you're selling a lead capture tool that is, what, about $500 per exhibitor. If you're losing out on 1,000 exhibitors because you didn't remind them at the right time, to purchase your tool, that's a massive revenue loss right there, right? And that's exactly why a lot of people end up not ordering stuff because they're too busy. Uh, you know, they've already booked the booth. They're like, we're already going to the show. They don't They don't get enough reminders that, hey, you're missing out. You, do, you still need to book your lead scanner. You still need to book your furniture. You still haven't done this. And then a lot of times they reach the event and they go and they're like, oh my God, this has gotten too expensive and I just don't have the time. Or a lot of times when you reach the show, the vendors are out of the, you know, they, they, they didn't bring enough uh, additional lead scanners and they were out of it or, uh, you know, the kind of furniture that the user wants, uh, that the exhibitor wants is not available anymore and you're offering them an alternative and they're not happy with that and then they end up going to the nearest Ikea or the nearest Target and getting that. So, so and all this happened because they didn't get the reminders at the right time to get it done. And that obviously is a loss on both ends. Obviously, the end user who didn't get the reminders at the right time now has to figure out a cheaper solution when they're at the event and they're running around. But from a vendor perspective, you put, lost out potentially on thousands and thousands of dollars just because this person was not reminded at time, on time, that, hey, you still haven't purchased a lead scanner. Hey, you still haven't booked your booth furniture. Hey, you still haven't lock the carpet and you will have to do it, right? So, and I personally feel that if I got those emails reminders, I would have, I would be much better organized and I would end up getting those things a lot more timely than instead of like, Steven, you and I have run around Target a lot of times. Exactly, we have, exactly. I mean, we have literally, yeah. literally running around to Target. Um, right, because I mean, we reach the show and then they're out of flat screen TVs. They're like, we don't yeah. have any more flat screen TVs. And you're like, okay, now I have to go find myself. Uh, yeah, that's, so, that's, that's, that's a bad taste as from, a, you know, an exhibitor perspective. It's like, I wish they would have told us ahead of time that, hey, there's, a, you know, a limited amount of TVs available. Um, so there was just, you know, poor communication. That leads to bad taste, you know, from uh, an exhibitor perspective. Nobody wants to leave the show floor at any given point. You feel like you're missing out. You want to stay there 24-7 as long as you can. So, yeah, I mean, something to help along those lines would be, you know, magnificent. Absolutely. And and as a vendor, I understand that. I mean, if you're doing 200, 300 shows and you're spread thin, I mean, you've got, you know, that means you've got thousands of exhibitors. You don't have time to send reminders. You don't have time to send every exhibitor a reminder. Hey, you still haven't purchased the lead scanner. I mean, 
just don't have the time and you just don't have the resources. And that's where AI email, AI follow-up bots come into play. All you have to do is plug in your exhibitor list into the AI follow-up bot and let the bot lose. Automatically, it sends them reminders. It sends them links to purchase your services. And you can set the cadence up and each email is personalized at scale. So each email is a very personalized email. It goes out, it reaches out to the exhibitor, says, hey, you know, I'm sending you a third reminder. The deadline is quick approaching. We have five more days before the early bird prices run out. Make sure that you place the order today. So, you know, if I keep getting that email, let's say every five days, every seven days, I am much more likely to go ahead and click on that and place that order. And that's exactly what we're doing here with CompuSystem. So, you know, uh, as you can see over here, you know, regular follow-ups dr dramatically increase the response rate, right? So, so you can see how many hot leads they got over the period of time. And, you know, they have X amount of people already in the campaign. And I'm going to show you actually their live dashboard. I'm going to show you an actual live dashboard. So you can see, so this is an example of a lead. And one of the things that, is super vital that we're going to look at here in this specific threat right now is even if you do have agents following up with people a lot of times these people are out of office because i mean if you're if i'm the exhibit manager for a company that means i am traveling a lot that means i am out of office a lot so a lot of times your email is falling to deaf ears because i haven't seen your email i have an out of office set up and i just don't have the time to reply to you so that's where our ai so that's why AI tools that are able to read the responses and schedule automated follow-ups come into play. And this is an example, Stephen, as you can see here as well, right? And I know you, you'd you like to add a little more once I'm done with this about the whole out-of-office piece, but how critical that is. But as you can see here, so, so Zoe reaches out to Amy on behalf of CompuSystems. You can see how personalized this email is, right? It is not, a, you know, uh, it you doesn't... A robot. You can't tell it's a robot. Exactly. Right? Very and, and it says that it's an official lead provider and you're receiving this email because you're an exhibitor at the show. So we're not just reaching out. So the first email goes out on Jan 30th. Amy didn't respond. Then another email goes out on the first. Well, um, I mean, Justin, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, that's neat because I most of them, it's usually, um, you know, um, uh, Shalini or Zoe or so you, that's that's really cool. Justin. At first, I thought it said Justin Bieber. I was like, that that would be kind of cool. <laughs> right. Yeah, I wish uh, Justin Bieber was doing that for us. But, yeah, he. I think he has a busier schedule than this. Yeah. So <laughs> That's really powerful. That's really neat. I like that. Right. So as you can see here now, I mean, it's reaching out and saying, hey, if you want to talk and you want to learn more, you can schedule like a call with me. So, you know, or you can just go ahead and place the order here. Right. Yeah. So, and then if you're not interested in having me reach out to you, you can just get back to me, say, no, thanks. So again, Amy didn't get back. So they gave them, gave her some more time, uh, considering, you know, you know, next reach out happens on February 11th. Again, are you available? Nothing. Another reach out. And this is all happening automatically. Nobody, no person. Just imagine as a salesperson having to do these. I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what, as a salesperson of Rune, I mean, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll admit, you know, sometimes I'm just not that thorough. Sometimes I have things on my plate. My okay. mind is more it, out, it, you It's know? not possible to, you know, keep reaching out to one person over and over again. Yeah. And, you know, you're like, okay, if they're interested, you know. Exactly. They'll exactly. exactly. And here you can see on this reach out, Amy has an out of office set up. And it gets back saying, I'm getting back on the 18th. You know, I'm not in the office. So Zoe reads that, and it automatically schedules next follow-up on the 21st. So it doesn't reach out between that day and the 18th, doesn't want to send anything to their email while they're out of office, and takes that whole communication to a whole next level. Now, I mean, you know, did I miss any emails from you? Hoping to start a conversation here. And there you go. Boom. Hi, Justin. I would like to get a system book for Seco. Can you make this easy for me and get me confirmed? Boom. There is a conversion right away done by AI. You have to do nothing but go here and drag and drop an Excel list and assign it to one of your show campaigns. That's it. Automatically, AI did the reach outs, 
And we kept following up, kept reminding them that, hey, you still haven't bought the lead scanner or you still haven't purchased your carpeting services or whatever it is. And it's gone ahead and done that. Now, one thing that we do offer, uh, the one thing that Zoe brings to the table, which is really cool, is the ability for you to integrate. Because, I mean, one of the things that you don't want is that if an exhibitor has placed an order, that they get any follow-ups. So one of the things that we have done here with them is also we're integrated with their ordering uh, API. So as soon as a person places an order, whether they're placing it via Zoe, whether they're making a phone call to place the order, or whether they're going to their website and placing the link, the campaign automatically stops. Zoe automatically receives that information that so-and-so exhibiting company has already placed an order. So do not bother them anymore. So the campaign automatically ceases at that point and, you know, automatically they stop getting further reach out. So you don't I mean that's where the AI really becomes really cool. Cause I mean, you can have multiple tools where you can schedule emails to go out. They don't care. It'll still keep going out. But what you saw here was the ability for the bot to read and understand, and also use third party information, third party party intelligence to make sure when to stop reaching out, you know, and all your, your salespeople, all they have to do is sit there and process these orders and make sure the numbers keep coming that's, in. That's a, that's a great point, Varun. So, you know, I have, I personally manage a sales team of about like eight here in New York. Uh -huh. and, uh, my guys, I mean, they're hungry. I mean, they're animals when it comes to, you know, hitting the phones and closing deals. But they're not, they're really not that tech savvy in terms of, uh, you know, getting in here and, you know, logging into Zoe. Um, can you explain just quickly um, how, like, you know, my situation where I have a sales team, they're really good on the phones, but when it comes to stuff like this, how would they, how would they initiate, how would they evoke this bot to start, you know, doing the follow-ups? I mean, is it a simple process or is it an intricate process? Can you just elaborate a little bit more? Right. I mean, as I just showed, uh, Stephen, uh, uh, a little bit earlier on the dashboard is that all you have to do is go ahead and add an Excel file, which has all your exhibiting leads for a specific event, and then assign a campaign here. Right. Right. No, I was so, referring to like, okay, you know, I, I manage that, but let's just say, can they just like CC, um, Zoe or anything I mean, like they that? Can, they can, but I mean, we're trying to even make it more automated, Stephen. So, I mean, okay. the goal is that let's not have, I mean, the salesperson, because this is not somebody they're meeting physically. These are exhibitors that are booking with the show registration company, right? Exactly. So they're booking. These are these are leads that are already there, right? Right. So Thank these guys, right. I mean, these are warm leads, and you're losing out on this money by not reaching out to them. That I mean, the goal true. is to make sure that you're persistently, actively reaching out to them, and they're getting the right information, right. and they're getting the right amount of reminders to make sure that they go ahead and place the order. Obviously, your point is really valid that if – by any chance anybody has been missed out over here or you receive a call, you can just send them an email and CC Zoe as well, which is a good point. But but the goal here is to make sure that we automate everything. And as you can see here, right, some of the takeaways, these are emails, not newsletters. These are not <coughs> marketing campaigns using HTML files to just have people click on a button. They're very friendly tone. They're very personalized. So this is personalization at scale. As you can see, I mean, it, you can relate to this. You can see like a person is reaching out to you, you know, and people show appreciation, right? So they say, thank you for the follow-up. What are the costs? I mean, that's exactly, Stephen, what I was saying is that I would appreciate if I am going to a trade show, I would appreciate if I was reminded at least a few times of some of the services that I need to make sure. Because, I mean, that's my responsibility, I know, but I have a hundred other things as an exhibit manager to make sure are happening. I have to make sure that my boot backdrop printing is happening in time. I have to make sure that my graphic artist uh, is working on the boot backdrop. I have to make sure that the shipping is happening of the logistics that I'm trying to send. So a lot of times there is certain things that I might forget. And then and I might- We often have to rely on those things later on the golf carts who drive to our booth and say, do you guys need anything or, you know, it's just uh, sometimes that's just not sufficient and efficient enough. Yeah, and then and then by the time you reach the show, you're like, I'll just make do with what I have. I mean, exactly. you know, I'll figure out I'm something right now. I'm not talking about that. Exactly right. And as I said, repeated reminders are helpful, not a bother. So you're not you're not bothering them. These are people who need these services, right? You are in the business of event sales. 
These are exhibitors who are definitely coming to the show. They have to get these things. It's just that they need to be reminded. And then you have to keep following up and you have to read. If they're saying, send me more information, that's where the AI comes into play. Again, these are things that, you know, as a salesperson, if you have a two person, three person team and you have 2000 exhibitors, it's just impossible to make sure that every exhibitor gets global, when you have global uh, exhibitors coming. Like, you know, right. I mean, I, I don't have the manpower to keep my guys up, uh, you know, 3 a.m. in the States when it's like, you know, the next day in Hong Kong. Um, it's just like, I don't have the manpower for them to service these needs and then I'm missing out. And then, then, then it gets backed up and then we got to follow up with those people on top of the people coming in for today. So, yeah, it's just, it, it really jams us up. Um, you know, now. And the whole point is to let your salespeople focus on the warm ones where people have responded saying, hey, I'm interested. Can you send me more information? Can I talk to somebody? So AI has already warmed up these leads for your salespeople. So all they have to do is go ahead, give them a call and go for the kill. They don't have to do the whole pitching anymore. AI has done the pitching. AI has already given them all the information that they've asked for, whether it was a product brochure, whether it was pricing information. Everything can be trained into the AI. It's a very very cool AI console where you can train how to respond to different questions. And then when they're ready to take a conversation to the next step, it sends an email to the salesperson saying, Hey, this person needs to be spoken to. Can you jump on a call? So it can either schedule a call or it can let the salesperson reach out to them. And that way, I mean, that's where I was showing earlier, right? Is that that's where we saw that how much the conversion rate for this specific client, Oh, here it is. So as you can see, the, re the response automatically goes high. You see more people responding because they're getting enough reminders and you see a lot of hot responses. And that's that's where, you know, things start changing and you start getting the value out of your events. And here's the point, right? I mean, these are sales that AI is bringing to you, which were not going to be there. I mean, which would have been really difficult to get. Your salespeople are going to miss out on them. And, uh, you know, I mean, Compu Systems has been using us for a year, uh, almost now, and they have seen almost a 7x increase in the responses. That and if that was a regular salesperson, they would be wanting some kind of bonus or take them out for lunch. And this, you know, um, we don't have to do anything. I mean, that's the beauty about AI, unless she eventually catches feelings like ex machina. But right. for now... Um, I mean, this is 24 seven. I mean, this is almost, this is like literally tripling your sales force. You got somebody 24 seven. I got a question though. So let's just say, um, you know, can I use, can I change like the name? Like, let's just say, um, during like, say day hours, I'd have the name as like, you know, Charles. And then at night I would have, would have it something else to make it like, look like I have multiple. Or do so I have this you can have multiple agents. So you can have multiple sales reps represented okay. by different names. Uh, okay. It doesn't change by day or night, Stephen, just FYI, but okay. it does change. You can have different reps. So you can have multiple reps reaching out and those leads get allocated to that specific sales rep. That is so cool. That so is so cool. rep can have its, his or her own assistant. Right. Yeah, so the cool. idea is to give your sales reps an AI assistant to do the grunt work for them. And I'm going to talk a little more about what Zoe AI basically does is it personalizes your marketing campaigns, your reach out campaigns at scale. It does persistent follow ups, multiple follow ups, and it can revitalize leads that were sitting in your CRM for a while. I mean, if you know, you're doing reach outs outside of just people who are coming to that event. Let's say you're reaching out to exhibitors to exhibit at the event. And there is exhibitors that had exhibited 10 years ago, five years ago, but they haven't exhibited for a while. Plug them into Zoe, reach out to them, you know, let them, let them get, you know, emails and personalized emails saying, Hey, we know you exhibited 10 years ago or five years ago. You haven't come back to us. Let us give you uh, you know, let us show you what we're doing. And would you like to talk to one of our sales agents? So like, like you can see here, all leads, dark data, give them a heartbeat, you know, give them a way to revitalize these leads. Just a quick one, Varun, like you kind of touched on this, uh, you know, from an exhibitor standpoint, uh, you know, you're getting a lot of, you know, out of offices, right? Um, you, because, you know, 
when the events are, you know, coming near, obviously people are going to have their out of offices set on, or they may be returning from an event. I mean, what happens in that scenario um, with using this, um, you know, this AI utility? Will it, so let's just say, see, Zoe keeps emailing Charles, and I'm not going to be back in the office until. Uh, Even uh, we we covered that part when I showed the out of office uh, piece uh, on the dashboard a little bit a little while earlier. Yeah, that's right. I was just, that's what I was just inquiring. So with that out of office piece, I mean, so do I have to ma manually turn that on? And you know, it, so she's smart enough to just automatically follow up, is what you're saying. Because yeah. I just I got a question from because I actually have somebody with me, um, one of my prospects, and they just they just came in, so they just wanted to you know, make sure that that was covered because that's very important. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we, we did uh, we did kind of touch on that and that's a very important point. And that's why I brought that up earlier is that gives your sales team an AI assistant that's not just following up, but is intelligent. It uses artificial intelligence to read what's going on. So, you know, like one person can have 10 sales assistants working for him or her on different campaigns. Right. So I can add, as Stephen Blendon, you can have 20 different campaigns running with 20 oh, different right. assistants, AI bots. Thanks for it. Yeah. yeah that's, exactly, that's the power that AI, AI marketing brings is the ability to give your team, augment your team. You might have three salespeople, but they can end up doing job of 400 salespeople because they have these AI assistants. One person can have 20 AI assistants running 40 different campaigns for that person and bringing leads from these 40 different campaigns directly into their channel, into their funnels. They can then focus. So, so what you're the saying is you can literally, you know, I only, like I said, some of my people that I work with, there's only like a few of us. So I could literally give the impression like, you know, I'm a stacked, um, you know, conference house. You know, they're, you know, as opposed to I'm just a three man shop, but this is gives the illusion that, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big player in the game. That's so cool. Absolutely. So one is that. And then the second is that you're able to do reach out to way more people than you possibly could have. Exactly. 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 You're able to, you know, you're not spreading your sales team thin anymore. You're letting them work on the creative piece, which is the actual sales focus on the warm leads. Whereas you're letting the AI reach out to these thousands of people, which would have been impossible for a human per a human. They're going to be exhausted. My guys will be exhausted. Right? You know, getting cold calls, not reaching anyone. By the time they get someone to close, they you know they might be fatigued. They're not closing properly. Right, and then and then the other piece, which is really important, is one is obviously personalization at scale, the ability for you to reach out to this massive audience now with personalized content with personalized emails, uh, you know, using AI sales assistance, but it's also the ability for you to give persistent, intelligent follow-ups instead yeah. of, you know, like reaching out with one newsletter. Great. Now somebody has to go check the metrics of the newsletter and see how many warm, how many cold, but here you're giving AI the ability to do these multiple reach outs. And you can see it on this screen. This is a really valid point is that the, after the second reach out, so you see the highest response rate from your leads is usually on the second, right. either on the second reach out or on the seventh reach out. And you know what? I'll be honest with you. My guys, you know, we're, we're looking at maybe three, maybe. Never goes to seven. You that's know what I mean? That's, that's just, okay. Yeah, they weren't interested. That is that is that was very impressive. You know, I mean, it just, there's so much room for human error when it's really when you're dealing with you know young guys out of college. You know, it gets exhausting. You feel like you're bugging the person. You know, so we usually have like a three touch approach, but the seventh reach out at thirty eight point nine percent that is beautiful. Um, right, and that that's is, that's the whole that's the whole point of using AI because AI can vary the cadence based on the campaign yeah. type. AI can decide what different channels to use to reach out. Now, that is another really cool thing, which I would appreciate if I am getting those reminders. If I have opted in to receive a text reminder, a lot of times I just don't get the time to check my email, right? I mean, uh, I'm like, okay, this email came from the show. Hang on, I'm getting an email from a customer. What is more important for me? Somebody reaching out to me or somebody getting back to me to who I reached out? So I'm going to focus on that, right? But now... After a few days, I get a text message saying, hey, you still haven't placed that order. You know, you still haven't done done this. So now you can add these different media. Talk about a game changer. 
Man, right. five years ago, I mean, where would we be? I mean, where were you at, Zoe? I mean, this is this is revolutionary. I mean, this is exciting. Um, you know, and, and I just feel more confident because I lose sleep. I'll be honest with you. I'll be completely honest with you, Vern. You know, sometimes I lose sleep at night because, you know, I can't be in the office every single day. And I don't know sometimes, you know, if, if my guy is a horse around, if they're surfing Facebook, you know. So you mean to tell me Zoe doesn't worry about, you know, uh, if she got any likes on Facebook? She's just focused 24-7. That is amazing. No bathroom breaks, no nonsense, just making sure by the time my guys get into the office, there's a there's a there's a meeting booked or, you know, uh, you know, there's just no room for fluff and it's fully manageable that I can handle. This is this is beautiful. Please continue. I'm just kidding. Right. And, and then, I mean, as I said, I mean, the the goal is to make the campaigns as real as possible. So you use different types of, you know, reach out. Some some could be long emails with which are like, you know, giving a lot of information. Some could be short emails, which are just a reminder. Or, hey, just pushing this to the top of your queue. And then having the right interval, having the right spacing between your reach outs. So these are things that help get more performance out of your campaign. When we were talking about the seven attempts or the seven reach outs, that doesn't mean that you reach out seven days a week and make that cadence every day. That could be like, you know, for me, I'd be like, no, be thing. Right, no way. So leave me alone. get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. Right. I, I, I heard those calls many a times coming from your office. You're like, hey, you just called me yesterday. I told you no. <laughs> right. and then, but the idea here is to yeah. do smart cadence, right? Yeah. So do it. So these seven reach outs could be done over a period of, who knows, three months, two months, one month, depending on when the campaign is. Like, let's say the trade show that I have just signed up for as an exhibitor, right, is in June and it's February. You got information that, okay, a new exhibitor has signed up. First email goes out today, end of February. You see there's no orders placed. There's no action taken. The next email could be, you know, first email goes out with all the information about the trade show. Okay, you need to place this order on this link. You need to place electricity on this link. You need to place carpeting on this link. Blah, blah, blah. Everything is there. 22% response. Nobody responds to the first email. They don't do any action on the first one. You know, they're like, okay, thank you. I'll do this. Then you send a reminder, which is which could be a short reminder, just saying, hey, I hope you got a chance to look at this. You know, you might miss out on the early bird pricing on a lot of these items. So I would recommend go ahead and do it now. You might see a huge response on that. But this email could have been from today, two weeks later from today, right? The first reminder or a week later, the first reminder could be still no response. You send a few more emails. But now these are like spread over time. And then around let's say April, you see, boom, the seventh email goes out and this person's like, oh my God, I really have to do this. I forgot. Okay. Thank you so much for sending me these reminders. I'm doing it right now. Boom. You see a huge amount of people orders coming in. And that's what uh, the case study that I was showing you earlier has seen. And that's where they've seen the increase in the amount of people that are placing orders is that these sixth and seventh reminders where you're like being persistent, AI has done it persistently, is where they say, hey, oh my God, thank you for reminding me. I had totally forgotten about this. The show is two months down the line and I still haven't done this. Thank you. And they go ahead and place it. And that's where we showed you one of the examples where the person was so appreciative about getting these reminders that they're like, thank you so much for sending me these reminders. So, and then and then this is a really cool piece again, which we, we feel as as a marketing engine or whatever tool that you're using, it's very important to have a really smart tool, which is using different channels. So, so one of the things that is also different, again, depending on what your end customer is. Now, let's say you are an event organizing company is reaching out to exhibitors to come and exhibit at your event. You might want to take your marketing a notch higher at that point. Instead of just sending them emails, instead of just sending them a phone call, you might want to send a handwritten note. You know, you might want to show that you care about them, that you're taking, making that extra effort. You really want them to come. You're making that extra effort to send them a handwritten note. And you're not really sending that handwritten note by sitting down and writing a thousand postcards. You're just plugging in Zoe's AI handwriting service, which writes this note, schedule it to go up, and does it for you. All you're doing it is adding that 
to your cadence is that the first reach out be a hand handwritten note. Again, it's very similar the way you schedule your emails. Only thing, instead of sending an email, Zoe is actually sending a postcard. It's sending it to the printer, printing the postcard, and sending it out. I mean, obviously, the posting is manual process. If you use the service, it is done by the service team on our side. But you have the ability to print it on your end and post it on your end. But the goal is that those 2,000 people, those postcards got printed, and all your person has to do is go and put them into the mailbox and send them out. So that first step is done automatically. Zoe then adds that as a follow-up campaign and starts doing email, email, and then it puts like a note on the salesperson calendar on a certain day based on the cadence that, hey, this person has received three reach outs. Might make sense for you to give them a call and see if they want to exhibit. And, and then this lead is no longer a cold lead. They've received a written note. And the salesperson has a lot of ammunition to say, hey, did you receive the postcard that I sent to you? Hey, have you had a chance to look at my emails? So it's not like they're not starting a cold conversation. This person's funny, already funny. heard from you. Funny experience that happened to me um, as well. You know, I called, you know, one of these warm leads. And I guess, uh, uh, you know, Zoe had reached out so many times that they didn't even want to speak to me. They wanted to speak to Zoe, you know, it was just, that's how real it seemed that it appeared. And, you know, right. no, absolutely. Like that's approaches, right. it's like, and I, and I was like, well, uh, that's the one, put it this way, Vern, that's the one time Zoe is on vacation. Uh, I, I would like to speak to Zoe. Oh yeah. She's like, I can take her, but she's actually gone. Zoe made such an impact with the persistent follow-ups, you know, that they felt that would be, it would only be right to speak to Zoe. I mean, that's how real and human the the approach was I received a postcard, you know, she's been constantly following up and I'm like, wow, that's, that's music to my ears. No, absolutely. No, that's a great point. And that, that happens a lot where they call in asking for Zoe, <laughs> Zoe or whoever the person is, that happens a lot. And uh, that's a great point. And now you can see the, the kind of quality of the handwritten notes when you're scheduling these campaigns, you're able to select the stationery, the, you know, postcard uh, designs, the handwriting that you want it, how neat you want it to be. And you can add your footers to it, etc. But this is, this is where things get to the next, next level of marketing where you're doing multi-channel without having to spend more than in a, more than you know, fifteen minutes to set up a campaign. I'm, I'm, and just, thinking, I'm just thinking a lot here, Avrun. Um, you know, one of my biggest pain points, you know, um, you know, leading a sales team is, you know, they're very good at you know closing the deal, but the problem is, is uh, you know, the follow up thank yous. It's like you know they're so focused on, you know, closing the deal, but just that follow up, you know. So with the you know, multiple campaigns, you know, reaching out you know, initially. And then the, we all lack, we're all guilty of that. You know, once you sign the contract, um, you know, hey, it's Christmas or it's a special holiday. Let me do a campaign on that just to keep my current uh, clients happy. So this is I'm just thinking out loud here. I mean, there's a lot that we can, that Zoe can be used for, not just to closing deals, setting up meetings, but doing the follow-ups uh, and the thank yous and, you know, to see, um, are you guys willing to sign up for next year's event? You know, I'm just, that's this, this is brilliant. Absolutely. You know, that's a great point that you just made. And, uh, and that's, that's the whole point is to make sure that everybody is treated equally. Um, even if that wasn't the most happening conversation that you had with them, or that's not the number one lead in your priority list. Let the salesperson focus on the hottest leads. Let them focus, but let AI treat everybody equally. Let everybody receive the same level of reach outs. Exactly. You never know which one of these that you think or somebody thinks is a cold lead might turn out to be your next big whale customer, right? Because they just they they were not being approached enough. Your your sales team was like, hey, they I reached out to this person two times. Oh, well, actually happened to me, you know, just a use case, you know, um, kept reaching out to the small client, you know. Um, I don't know. You got to deal with them whenever you're doing an Apple developer account, getting the Duns number, that client, you know, um, I had, you know, I've been trying to get a hold of getting to the company down in Bradstreet and, you know, it's just, it's just hard. I just couldn't get past, you know, the gatekeeper. And then one day, um, you know, my, my, my bot, you know, reached out and I'm like, wow, wait a minute. Wait, how in the world did my bot connect with Dun and Bradstreet? And I've been trying every single day on the phone it just wasn't working sometimes it just takes a different name you know absolutely no that's true and that's true and then sometimes it just needs that 
level of persistence that sometimes is hard to give as a human to every yeah. lead that is there. In the I just you, know, you, can't, you can't be persistent on leads that you feel are warm and, and you are. Everybody is because, I mean, as a salesperson, your job is to bring in sales and bring in revenue. And if you see, okay, this seems to be a warm lead, it is a natural tendency to focus on those warm leads, right? I mean, if you're like, okay, I have a higher chance of closing something. This is my commission check here. Let me focus on this. And that's what we're trying to say from the beginning of this presentation, this webinar is let your salespeople focus on the real money and let Zoe do the grunt work for them. Let Zoe do the, you know, the warming up of these leads and then, then let your salespeople attack these leads with full vigor and go and close them and give them, give the, give the AI enough, you know, you know, ammunition, like let it reach out, not just by email, do multi-channel. If these people have opted in to receive text messages, also use text. You never know which is a channel that they might find, okay, this is the right time to respond, you know? And the statistics show that seven attempts and three different media types are the optimal to get a positive or just a response, you know? And have intelligence built into it. Uh, so it's not just reaching out. The ability for your AI assistant to read the responses uh, and schedule follow-up actions is very important. Things like having built-in meeting scheduler. If somebody said, hi, I'd like to talk to somebody, let them select a time and say, hey, this is the right time. I, I want somebody to call me at this time. Close the conversation. Get an action out of it. And AI, make the AI powerful enough to do that for you. If somebody's out of office, don't reach out to them when they're out of office. You're not going to get a positive response. Give them a breather. Give them a break. Reach out to them when they're back. Let AI do that. And AI is able to do that. That's the whole beauty of AI is it's able to read out of offices, understand when they're coming back, and automatically schedule the follow-up when they're back. So so well, this well, is brother Brun, just in terms of uh, you know, just I really like the fact that this, you know, it's uh, coming across as a human, like in terms of uh well it is it smart enough to know, let's say if they're calling here in New York, uh Maybe to say something like, oh, I hope you're staying warm or, or anything like that. Is there any extra layers out there um, that can really give it that human feel? Sorry, I didn't get that question, Steve. So basically, let's say if, you know, you you know, I'm in New York. Can Zoe recognize ge geographic? Can you integrate with like maybe Google Maps or anything like that to realize that, okay, how's the um, weather? On the email tool, uh, we do have some. So, Stephen, uh, I think what you're alluding to is more of the AI chat piece where we're able to do location tracking. But on the email piece, we are able to, uh, you know, we are able to uh, do small talk. So if somebody says something, we are able to get back to them. But, um, you know, I mean, not that is usually not the key, uh, you know, aspect within the email piece. We are able to do, uh, you know, respond with some uh, conversations. But it's more of a use case on the chat piece where, you know, if somebody's coming from New York, it's able to engage them using that conversation. How were you able to? And we have that intelligence in our NLP platform. So Zoe does have that intelligence, Very but cool. email is more contextual. It's more about, you know, responding to them about, you know, what they're looking for. I guess the reason why I asked, the reason why I asked that question is like, let's just say I was just, I was just thinking outside of the box. I know a few of my, you know, uh, some of my clients that maybe want something on their website in conjunction with, like, I just wanted to see, can it, can it interchange? Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like from, from the bot to um, the email. So it, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. You're a very valid point, but it it can. That's what I'm saying. It can understand, it can read, and it can go about that. But let's get back to our key presentation today, and let's go down to the takeaways. So, based on the case study that we just showed you, uh, you know, we have 187. So, in just 30 days, Zoe AI brought about 187 hot leads, positive responses. So, that's a striking metric right ai giving you 187 sales in 30 days is that i mean that's just too good right like i said earlier we said using ai allow the client to send and manage emails at a really high scale right personalize and send these emails we spoke about the friendly tone that gives the ai that personal loop uh and then it does these automatic reminders
calendars, which is very important in the events business, especially because these are people that are very busy and they appreciate these reminders. It's not a bother to them. And, you know, it hands it over. So it's able to send these hot leads to your salespeople. Like, you know, Steven's team gets these hot lead alerts when somebody says that I'm ready to talk. They get this alert. And this is the most positive thing that they get in their day. Oh, I got a lead. I didn't have to do anything for this. I got a hot lead. And yeah, so that those are the takeaways from today's presentation, guys. Um, you know, more than happy to answer any questions that you might have um, and uh, take it from there.